Assalamu alaikum and very good morning. This is the fourth lecture on firearms. Bismillah rahman rahim I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Koker, Professor and HRD of Forensic Medicine Department in CMH Lahore Medical College. Now the tail, tail wag, tail wag phenomena. This is, this is another specific phenomena which is shown by the bullet when it leaves the baron. That means the tail wags around its own axis. It wags unstable. So it may be either the initial tail wag. Initial tail wag is immediately when the bullet leaves the barrel. And the intermediate tail wag, then the bullet strikes some other medium, the glass, the metal, or any other medium when entering into another medium. And then terminal tail wag, that finally when the velocity is reduced and at when it is going to strike the weapon or the victim or the target then again becomes unstable. The classical example of this tail wag phenomena is shown by the spinning top. When you spin a top, initially it is unstable. It wobbles and then it becomes steady, smooth flight and in the end when again the velocity of the spinning top is reduced, it again wobbles. So these are various unstable movements which are shown by the bullet that are known as, those are known as the tail wag phenomena. So initial tail wag is basically when the bullet is within the chamber, traveling within, within the barrel, it is supported by the walls of the barrel. And when it leaves the barrel, it enters into an other medium that is air and due to loss of this lateral support, air resistance and gravity, the bullet become unstable. It wags and that is known as initial tail wag. And after traveling some distance, again it becomes steady, but initially it wags, that is initial tail wag. Then intermediate tail wag, then the, when the bullet enters into another medium, it again wags, it again becomes unstable. Bullet striking the glass, metal, or any other material, it becomes unstable. So this is a diagram representing the bullet passing through a glass. Then the terminal tail wag. Terminal tail wag is shown Terminally, when the bullet has reduced its velocity, it again becomes unstable. So the medical importance of tail wag is that it shows a typical form of entry boards. When the bullet is initial wobbling or at the terminal wobbling, it is unstable and it will produce a typical type of wounds like the wound can be bigger, it can be X-shaped, or when it strikes laterally, it should it will be showing a keyhole type of entry wound. Or if the bullet passing through another medium, the glass or the metal it may be fragmented and it may show many multiple entry wounds. Or terminally, when the velocity is so much reduced that it has not got enough energy to enter into deep tissues. It only will be lodged skin deep or muscle deep. So these are various phenomena which medically are important because of the tail bag. This is a keyhole uh, type of wound produced by the lateral impact of the bullet. Though the terminal ballistics, which is very important wound ballistics. We'll discuss that what are the components which are going to affect the wound, how the wound production is by the firearms. So the firearm wound, it is said as that firearm wounds, it's a special trauma because 
whole traumatology is in this wound. There will be burning, there will be blackening, there will be shock waves and cavitational effects, laceration, fractures. So all type of trauma will be seen in firearm wound. So firearm wounding is a special form of trauma producing not only a breach or defect in the body or the person, but also there are multiple other factors which will be translated into the victim, onto the victim. So that's why the firearm wounds are called as a special form of trauma. And this sentence has been from my late professor Naseeba Ravan's famous book. So the terminal of the bone ballistics, it is concerned with the effect of bullets on the target at impact until it comes to rest. So what is the mechanism of wound production? There will be laceration, crushing by the energy which has been translated to the tissues. When the bullet is striking at high speed, whole energy will be transferred to the tissues. They will start traveling with the same speed of the bullet in forward and outward direction, which will cause extensive laceration and crushing. Then there will be effect of shock waves. The shock waves or the pressure wave, they are the compression waves which are traveling with the bullet. Shock waves, air waves, they are traveling and producing its effects on the target. And these high velocity, if the bullets are high velocity, they will produce gravitational effect. That is, the bullet is traveling at such a tremendously high speed that the energy imparted to tissue is extensive and they will start traveling outward and forward and they are so much stretched that a big cavity is formed underneath their track. So when we discuss the laceration and the crushing which is caused by the bullet or the firearms, we should have a or recall our knowledge of kinematics, that is the knowledge of physics. As we know, the velocity is the key factor in gunshot wound because the kinetic energy is directly proportional to half the mass and square root of velocity. So simply by increasing the velocity, we can produce extensive energy. So that's why a small bullet with its high speed velocity produces enormous damage instead of a brick, which is much larger than the weight of the bullet. But the velocity is much less than the bullet, so the brick is not producing much damage than the bullet. So velocity is the key factor in the firearm trauma. That Doubling the mass will double the energy, whereas the doubling velocity will produce four times energy. Therefore, the small caliber bullet traveling at high speed can produce extensive injury than a large caliber bullet traveling at low speed. So amongst the firearm weapons, the low velocity weapon and high velocity weapon, the high velocity weapon will be producing more lethal or damaging effects than the low velocity weapons. So the laceration and crushing is caused by the missile velocity, that the bullet velocity. And secondly, the shape and the composition of the projectile, that the area at which it is striking, that is important. Angle of impact, then flight and other characteristics. If the bullet is showing a typical type of pattern during its flight, which may change the appearance, the laceration and the crushing. The bullet, when fragmented, will produce multiple anti-wounds. These are 
various atypical movements. And this small video will show how much energy is produced and what damage. So you just watch that small bullet traveling at high, at high speed produces so much damage. Then the role of shock waves. The shock waves, they are shown by the high velocity weapon. The bullets which are at higher speed, that is 3,000 to 3,000 feet per second, per second, and they produce with the shock waves. These shock waves are traveling within the, with, alongside the bullets. And these shock waves, they also impart energy to the tissue and they produce such an energy that the tissue starts traveling outward and forward around. Though this is a very short time, 15 to 25 microseconds, but energy, amount of energy which has been created can be 1000 pound per square inch. So this much pressure is going to be imparted to the tissue and not only at the point of striking the bullet, the damage can be distant. So that's why the bullet is striking from a remote area in the body, but the stomach or the urinary bladder gas can rupture because of the shock wave. This is a diagrammatic representation showing the shock wave. And this video will show you will watch that how the shock waves are traveling alongside the bullet. You can see the shock wave, they are traveling circumferentially around the bullet. So these shock waves then the, they impart such amount of energy or pressure to the tissues. The tissues start traveling with the same speed and they move in the forward and outward direction. And this will cause a cavitational effect and this forward and outward direction movement may last for small time and will produce a large cavity underneath but tissues again will recoil back and a permanent larger cavity will remain so just by looking at the wound looking a big cavity underneath you can say that this is a high velocity weapon wound so the size and shape depends upon the capacity of the bullet to disperse the energy, the size and shape of the cavity. Tissues will be moving forward and outward. And this continues for a shorter time, for a few milliseconds. And this creates a cavity which sucks in air from entry and exit side. And cavity may be 30 times more than the diameter of the bullet. But after recoil, the permanent cavity will be smaller than the temporary cavity which has been generated by the energy. But even then the cavity will be much bigger. So this is another diagrammatic representation showing the pellet, the lowermost is by the shotgun pellet, a gel gelatin model showing the cavitational effect and the C is by the pellet and B is by the rifle and A is by the jacketed rifle. So the effects of cavity with the stretch of the moving forward and outward, they will damage the nerves and the muscle, even the distant part. This is a clay model showing the cavity, cavitational effect. And you can see this is a much larger than the size of the bullet. And this is another video we'll be showing the 
gravitational effect. You can see that how much bigger cavity will be produced by the these high velocity bullets than the actual size of the bullet. So the gravitational effect is produced by the high velocity weapons and low velocity weapons do not produce these gravitational effects. So the medical legal importance of wound ballistics is that when we study the weapon, wound, it helps us in recognizing the entry and the exit wound. So by looking at the wound, we can tell because there are certain characteristics which will be on the anti site and will be, will be lacking on the exit wound. So we can identify which is the entry and which is the exit wound. We can assess the direction of fire, the distance of fire, and the relative position of the victim and the angle of the fire. The cause of death can be determined, the manner of death and identification of the firearm. So these are the medical legal importance when we study the wound. Thank you very much.